Have you ever noticed that there are some people whose circumstances when they go up, the people are very high, they're very excited, they're very happy, they're very content, and when their circumstances go low, they go down in the dumps and they struggle. And then you find other people who seem to be kind of even keel all the time, regardless of whether things are really high or whether they're really low. And it's not because they're living in denial. It's not because they're ignoring their circumstances. They've learned something called differentiation, where they can take their own well-being and the source of their well-being and not have it right upon their circumstances. If how we feel about ourselves and how we feel about life and how we feel about what we're doing rises and falls based upon our circumstances, we will live a very chaotic life because we never know what's going to come at us. We never know what's going to, when things are going to be going really well and our thing would be going up or when things are going really rough we get sad news or someone is uh, their life is in chaos and it affects us and our, we'd go crashing down and uh, one of the things that I found is, a, is an encouragement in the area of learning differentiation the ability to maintain your well-being regardless of what's going on around you is found in first uh, Samuel chapter 30 it tells the story of David and his band of warriors who are kind of on the run from King Saul. King Saul's trying to take him out because David has been anointed as the rightful next king of Israel. Saul wants nothing to do with it. He lost the kingship because of rebellion against God and disobedience. And so in 1 Samuel chapter 30, we see David and his men carrying out a series of raids against, you know, neighbors. Not when I say neighbors, I mean enemies against the Philistines, against those that would be attacking the people and welfare of the people of Israel. And on this particular raid, they come back to their home base, a city called Ziklag, and they find that it's been attacked, it's been ransacked, and it's been burned down. They don't find any bodies because every person in Ziklag has been taken captive. All the women and children have been taken, most likely to serve as slaves or to be adopted into the tribe as as concubines or worse. And so David's men, we see just very tumultuous up and down with their emotions. They're all over the place. And, you know, who wouldn't be upset in a situation like this? And there came a point where they're so upset and they're so angry that these guys are contemplating killing David and they're gonna take him outside the the city and stone him, throwing rocks at him until he dies. And it says it greatly distressed David, as it would. He's he's aware of what's going on around him. He sees the circumstances, but he did not lose it. He didn't go down into a hole. He didn't uh, just emotionally crash and withdraw. It says, but David strengthened himself in the Lord his God. And I think there's something to be said at times where we are experiencing just absolute chaos in our life we can find an even keel we can find a a way to stabilize because we have a rock we have a savior we have a fortress we have a faithful God who's not going anywhere who never changes who's the same all the time that we can draw strength and encouragement from so that even when everything is crashing around us we don't have to crash with it and when things are great we don't have to just soar into the heavens waiting for that next roller coaster coming down. My hope and my my prayer for us today is that we learn the practice of finding our strength in God and finding our identity in God and finding our well-being in Him. Hope you have a great rest of your week. God bless you.